Let's talk about how we use the discriminant. You may know the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, and you might recognize where that comes from. You maybe have seen the quadratic equation, and our discriminant comes from the part underneath the root of the quadratic equation. So it's used as kind of a shortcut because remember when you've done some questions where you're trying to solve for x and you get some numbers under here that are negative and you could try this on the calculator just to prove it to yourself right now. Get a calculator, do the root of any negative number like the root of negative 2. The calculator will say error and what that means is there's no solution or there's no x-intercept. So we could save ourselves the extra time of calculating everything else, just go straight to the discriminant, plugging the values b, a, and c into this. So let's look at that. So there's really actually three possible outcomes. We could have no roots or x-intercepts, or we could have one of them, or we could have two x-intercepts. So we've talked a little bit about getting no x-intercept. That's when there's a negative under the roots, when the discriminant is negative, or when b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. That's another way of showing negative. One of the other outcomes is when we have a root of zero when b squared minus 4ac underneath the root equals zero what we would do in the quadratic formula if we had that is add the root of zero and then we would do another one subtracting the root of zero but you would get the same thing you just have one answer it would just be negative b over 2a and that means we'd have one x-intercept and quite often we have two intercepts that's when the discriminant under the root is positive, or when b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, we would have two x-intercepts. For example, x equals some number or something else. You've probably done a question with that already. And one x-intercept, and none. What that looks like on a graph, for example, let's say we have our Cartesian plane. If the parabola was somewhere above the x-axis, it would not intersect the x-axis and there would be no x-intercepts. So the parabola could really be anywhere above or below the x-axis. You can see there are no x-intercepts. When the discriminant is equal to zero, when it equals zero, and we have one x-intercept, what does that look like? Well, for example, if we had a root on the x-axis, so let's say this is zero, four, the vertex is at zero, four, or if we have a root, let's say somewhere like this, you can see there's just one x-intercept here. We would know that when we do the discriminant. And then when there's two x-intercepts, what, what does that look like? Well. You've probably seen that a lot of times already. So that's when we have a parabola crossing the x-axis twice. And there's many different types. Just showing a couple here. So to recap, we have zero x-intercepts when the discriminant is less than zero, when b squared minus 4ac is negative. We have one x-intercept when we calculate b squared minus 4ac and it equals zero. And finally, we have two x-intercepts when the discriminant is greater than zero.